God in our spirit. By the Holy Ghost using the word. Releasing things into our spirit. Then someone would ask. What's the purpose of this whole revelation? Why does God do these things? Why has he gifted us with so much revelation? Why has God entrusted us with these deep things that you can hardly hear of or see in other places? Why are we being given this so much opportunity? Why does it look like each of those services will come in, we don't even know what to expect, we shout, we scream. It's as though God wants to kill us with revelations. Why those revelations? Because there are certain things that God will not do for man until he first reveals it to man. You know what the Bible says? God can do nothing except he reveals it to the prophet, his servant. The depth of God's revelation is his redemptive power. God's revelation is his redeeming power. The revelations of God, a church will be rated, graded, but the amount of revelations comes out from the place. And the people are going to be weighed in the balance of spiritual scale based on the amount of spiritual revelations they have. Your weight in the spirit is determined by how much revelation you have operating in you. You don't have weight in the spirit until you have the depth of God's revelation in your spirit. Stored up, used. Because your life can only be progressive based on the amount of revelation you have. The revelations of God are the light of the spirit. They are the voice of the spirit. God can only move you in faces based on the revelations you have. Because the revelations of God's word are the faces of the spirit that we see. That a man moved in the realm of the spirit from one room to two rooms. To a room and palace self-contained. To two bedroom to three bedroom in the spirit. It's based on the amount, the depth of God's revelation. That you are not scared on the, in the physical, in the spiritual. It's based on the amount of revelation that has done in your spirit. That nothing moves you regardless of what you hear and see. It's a, a product of the revelations of God that has been poured in your spirit. That God redeems your time. What the palmer worm, the canker worm have stolen from you is as a result of the revelations of the Spirit of God that works in you. There is something called divine healing. Divine healing means that a man is sick, he can go to God and receive healing. I woke up with cough, I receive healing. I woke up with pain, I receive healing. That's divine healing. But that is not God's best. And you cannot transcend from that place to the other one without this revelation. God's best is divine health. The realm where you don't fall sick. That is Eden. It's a pleasurable place of God. You cannot move there by prayer. No. The eyes of your understanding be flooded with light. The lights there are the revelations. That when a man, when God floods your spirit with light, you scream because the depth of it. The Bible says God has given a word in Jacob and has, by that word, lighted up Israel. A man's light in his life is dependent upon the revelations of the spirit that he has received. The growth of a church, the capacity of a man of God to speak in command things and see them come to pass, in assurance, is based on the amount of revelation in his spirit. That is the light with which we function. Can I shock you? Your revelations determine your walk in eternal life. It's your revelation that determines your participation in eternal life. It is the revelation you know that makes you participate. That a man is not afraid. That a man speaks from the pedestal of authority and yet he's, he's comfortable. It's based on his revelation. It's not juju. It's not charms. It's the depth of God's light in your spirit. It's the revelation. The redemptive power of God is his revelation. That's why Paul prayed. He said, my prayer for you is that the eyes of your spirit be open. That's my prayer for all of you every day. That you may see what you ought to see. That you may hear what you ought to hear. 
And that you may be able to walk in it. If you cannot hear it and cannot see it, there is no way you can walk in it. And even if you walk in it, it will be too long. You walk out. Why did Peter fear and began to sink? Because it didn't come to him as a revelation. It was a father-son relationship. If it's you, ask me to come. And he came. He said, come and he came. If it dawned on him as a revelation, Peter will walk past Christ and keep walking. Why didn't God say, Father, I'm walking now, please help me? Because it was a revelation. If it dawns in your spirit, there are things you can do. And when it dawns in your spirit, there are things you cannot do. That a man can fly in the spirit is depth of the revelations of God in his spirit. That a man can walk is the depth of the revelation he carries. That a man can run is the depth of the revelations he carries. God seeks to equip our life by the depth of our revelation. A man of God is only deep by the depth of his revelation. A man of God is only equipped by the depth of his revelation. So revelation is the redeeming power of God. It's the voice of the spirit. It's the language with which God speaks to us. He can come down. He can go up. He only speaks to you based on your level of revelation. How much can you understand? Truly, how can a man run in the spirit if he doesn't know the track? How can you fly if you have not been there before? How? It's your revelation. Paul can speak and Isaiah will be watching even though he's a prophet. Because the depth of the revelation that Paul carries, Isaiah didn't hear there. The throne of heaven, one is reserved for, 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 for Paul. Why? Because through him certain things were given to the church. The place of Paul the apostle is quite different from the place of Elijah. Because the least person in the kingdom of God is greater than Elijah who was heard as the greatest of all prophets. The least in the kingdom. If the least in the kingdom that just gave his life to Christ is greater than Elijah who was a prophet, how much more the depth, the occupation of the man apostle Paul in his place in the realm of the spirit because through him the revelations of Christ was unveiled. You see why I cannot stand in here empty? You see why I cannot come in here shallow? You see why I cannot speak to you in that low terms? You see why that every day I must upgrade you and put you because people who make phones upgrade phones. If phones can be upgraded and TVs can be upgraded and cars can be upgraded, why can't revelations be upgraded? Why can't we upgrade believers? Why can't we push them? The pictures of 1980 and the pictures of now are not the same thing. So why can't I upgrade your life? Why should you come to see me on a Sunday today and you remain the same when you see me on a Wednesday? Why? There should be an addition in your life. There should be a multiplication in your life. When you see me next week Wednesday and you see me next week Sunday, there should be an upgrade in your life. I should have taken you to another realm and you leave the quarters where you were and you can look back and say, ah, you are getting closer to something. A man of God is not weighing in the spirit by how much gift you operate, but how much revelations he carries. The giftings of a man are quite different. The giftings are things you didn't work for, but the revelations are things you earn. You, you delve into the realms to get them. And it's only based, how do I know? Proverbs 20, 29 verse 18. Let me show you something. Because some of you will come here, all you're interested in is your beauty, your hair, your trouser, your skirt. You go out there, you go to church. Man of God, see vision. Man of God, see vision. If a man of God sees vision for you today, sees tomorrow, next tomorrow he'll be tired. He doesn't see anything, God. Will he continue to be seeing vision on you? Your mother has died. Your father. I see your father coughing. <laughs> tomorrow again you come. I see your pants missing. <laughs> next tomorrow you come. I see somebody want to take your phone. To the point, the cravings of the church has made ministers to look like native doctor. Because we want to satisfy the yearnings of the church, of the people. But if people can be hungry, there's something a man of God told me we're talking. And he said, Pastor, your own people are different. Because you have trained them to go for the word. That that is where the thing is. The starting and the end of everything is the word. You don't come to this place and see me being, you bring entertainers to entertain you. You can come to church, gifting church, and see one comedian come in here to make you laugh. Why do you want to laugh? The situation of Nigeria is not appealing. Why do you want to laugh? Even what you hear makes you laugh. 
I don't bring one person and he comes here and begins to sing. Yamulele, yamulele, and everybody's dancing. And after that, he say, Kai, to the church, and we sweat where we But there's nothing. There is no depth in your spirit. If you're pushed, you fall. The Bible says, when you fall in the days of adversity, your strength is little. How do you gain strength? Revelations. You don't gain strength by singing. It's the depth of things that hit your spirit. See, hear what I said. Hit your spirit. That you are sleeping and something hits your spirit. You wake up like Ezekiel. You say, ah, ah, what was that? Oh God. And another thing hits your spirit. You change gear. Cars have gear. Is that not it? The man who moved from gear 1 to gear 2, some have gear 7. They want to fly. How can you remain in one gear forever? There are certain things you cannot do. But by revelations, we change. We move from one place to the other. We, we, we drive our way through. Our speed increases by the depth of revelations. It's the revelation. Look at it. Wherefore, there is no vision. Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. If you read it in the King James, it's a little bit blinding. Go to the Amplified. You see something. Look at the Amplified. Look at the Amplified. Where there is no vision, no redemptive revelation of God. So the revelation of God is the redemptive power of God. For God to redeem a man, he gives him a revelation. Hmm. My God. Hi. What is the assurance that you can travel and sit with your uncle who is a wicked man? Revelation. It's not because you are going to clap your hand and travel with handkerchief. What about if the handkerchief disappears on the road? Take this oil. When you travel, sprinkle it. If both the oil and the handkerchief are on your inside, you know that the reason Paul had to use apron was because he was limited by time, limited by chance, limited by the body. That the sole purpose of putting the anointing was not to put it on her aprons and handkerchief. The humans, the human entity was the place God meant for the anointing to dwell. He doesn't want the, the handkerchief to carry the spirit. Was he? So if you travel with that revelation and you meet your uncle and you shake him and the man looks at you, the boldness that oozes out from you is not as a result of the handkerchief you have, but the redemption, the redemption of the revelation you carry in your spirit. That no man born of a woman can hurt you. When God appeared to Joshua, he didn't say take power, take this one. He says no man and he was speaking it. The guy was like, huh? As he was saying it, the depth of it was going through his spirit. That God, do you remember what I told you on Wednesday? When the angel was talking to Gideon, when he says, Gideon, thou mighty man of valor, the Lord is with you. I told you something. I told you something. I told you that Gideon was sitting down. When he says, the Lord is with you. And the guy said, if the Lord be with us. Where are the miracles and all the things that our father told us? The angel didn't say, well, the reason was because, ah, he looked at him. The Bible says, he looked upon him and said, go in this might. Which means, when he looked upon him with the revelation that came to his spirit, the guy was already shaking. There was a vibration of what he heard. And he says, go now in that might. And the guy was sent to go. To redeem people. But first to redeem his family. Did you notice that when Gideon got to his father's house, he burnt the shrine. Without carrying prayer warriors. Gideon, who was afraid, hiding, burnt the shrine. Why? In this might. Go in this might. He burnt down the shrine. And the next day, the people said the shrine is burnt. His father was the chief priest. They said, bring your... How do we know? The Bible said they made, they made research and discovered it was Gideon. And they said, bring your son. Let's kill him. The father said, I've been the chief priest for a very long time. You can't kill my son. What did he say burnt? Shrine. Belongs to who? Ogugu. Ogugu should go and fight if he has power. Sir, let him go and fight the man who destroyed the shrine. Do you think Ogugu did not come? Do you think Ogugu didn't come? Ogugu came but met another thing. When Ogugu came, the the the, 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 the revelation around Gideon. Ogugu could not look at him. Ogugu said, I'll go catch you. Gideon said, look at you. I showed you like Bara. So all the while you've been deceiving us. No! Don't think the thing was deceiving them. When they made inquiry, they did spoke and told them who killed, who destroyed it. It is with Gideon. Which means the thing has power. That song, they get mouth, but them know they talk. No, it's for man-made, the one they mold, but, but the spirit they talk. 
For the spirit they see. But the one they mold doesn't talk. But the spirit behind it talks. So. So Gideon went with that might. And was able to destroy the shrine. The might. Words. Revelation. When the revelation hits you. That you can do certain things. You come out and you become unquestionable. Matthew 13, 16. Jesus appreciated the disciples. Look at what he said. What I want to say today is. is just a few minutes. We'll go home. Because. What I thought I was going to tell you. I've looked at the time and look at you. Carrying it will be too heavy. We're still talking about why the revelation. Where we have not even gotten. Ah. Look at Jesus. But blessed. Go back to King James. Blessed. Look at what Jesus said. Blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear. This is, this is congratulation. For your eyes see and your ear. Your ear hears. What do you think the eyes were seeing? Do you think they were seeing the things that were happening? No! Jesus was speaking something from the pedestal of the, the spiritual. He was talking about spiritual insight. He said, I thank God for you that you can see the things you see. That the eyes of your spirit has been opened to see revelations from the word. And your ears are open to hear deep things of the revelations of the kingdom. He said, you are blessed. A man who sees revelations, hears revelations, cannot but be blessed. But now, can I tell you something? On Wednesday, many of us were screaming, Hey! Who? Ha! Hey! Who? He! Ha! 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 He! He! Ha! Some of us were speaking to us, Reke! Boko! Shaka! Maka! Luko! Yeke! Yaka! Moko! Kila! Kaba! Ah! Bolo! 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 You were jumping! Woo! In the midst of all that we are doing, that has been coming to us, may we not come to the point where we become an ordinary church only craving for revelations. Somebody didn't hear me. Because the revelations are the wisdom of God. May we not get to the point where we only, we become like every other church and every other man of God. All we dish out is nothing but revelations. But don't forget the fact that in the midst of the revelations which are the wisdoms of God, we must not deny the power thereof. There is the power of God and there is the wisdom of God. Paul in the book of Corinthians, he says, Christ both the wisdom of God and the power of God. Don't let us dwell only on the wisdom. That you cannot change an entire nation by revelation. Only. Ah, uh-uh, but by the power of God. What did he say in Psalm 110 verse 3? Psalm 110. Psalm 110 verse 3. Psalm 110 verse 3. What did he say? He says in Psalm 110 verse 3. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. Not in the day of thy revelation. Look up. Revelation is for those born in the house. Power is for those outside. We must not get to the point where we only shout. Hey, hey, pastor, pastor, pastor. Don't deny the power thereof. You must mingle the two of them. Both the wisdom and the power of God. Are you following what I'm saying now? We must not be carried away by only the revelations of God's spirit. We must also crave for the power. Because it's not complete until the power follows. Romans 1 verse 4. Even Christ was declared. Romans 1 verse 4. Romans 1 verse 4. See the declaration of Christ. You have to be fast and follow me. Romans 1 4. And Christ was declared to be the son of God. Which what? Which what? I can hear you. Which what? Which what? According to the spirit of what? Don't be holy alone. Carry power. I'm holy. Holy. Are ah, you Lord? Walk by them. They go kill you. The reason your uncle is called out to walk by jail is because he carries power. Don't come to the village and say, Uncle, do you know the four dimensions of wisdom? He's looking at you like this. You don't start a church in a remote village teaching them on the platforms of Christ. 
the three wisdom of God, the true knowledge of God, the, the lambano of faith. What's that? That's how they look at you. What's that? Christ was declared to be the Son of God with power. Somebody shout power. power. What do we have today? Churches without power. They have to look for something to replace it. What, what has become the replacement factor? Praise night. Comedy night. Because they lack power. You don't. No matter how much you shout, brothers and sisters, remember that the balance factor is the wisdom and the power of God. First Corinthians chapter 2 verse 4. Oh God. First Corinthians 2 5. Let's look at 2 5 first. Look at 2 5. Look at Paul. Look at Paul. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men. But what? In the power of God. Somebody shout power. Power. Eighty percent of the people who came to who comes to this church will tell you that I was invited because they told me I had I had I had a woman called me from Kano yesterday. Was it Kano or Kasena somewhere? I said, I heard that your God does wonders. She didn't tell me I heard that the messages you are preaching, they are very powerful. No, she has not come. She heard. So you must balance it, both the revelations and the power of God. But let me tell you something. For you to stand at the junction of revelation without power is that you are standing alone. The platform of revelation urges you power, gives you power. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Give someone a high five. Say, power is important. Tell another person, power is important. First Corinthians 4.20. 4.20. Church, let's read it together. One, two, go. Read it again. One, two, go. Remove word. Put English. Where you have word. Put English. Read it together. One, two, go. Remove the word English, put grammar. Let's read it together. One, two, go. Read it again with that grammar. It sounds better. One, two, go. Again, for the kingdom of God is not in grammar. There's a level you operate as a man of God. Eh? Your house in the estate, people don't go close to that area. It's a living room. Pass like this. The same way they fear the house of wicked men because they don't know what you can do. They came to arrest the late admission of Sinis House. And the gate men was, were trying to stop them. Say, we have to arrest you. He came out. <clears throat> Who are these people? Say, yeah, we came to arrest you. He said, stand there until I'm done. They could not move. How many of you have heard of the late singer, Perry Coma? That was to be arrested in our nature by tax collectors. And they carried him. He said, so shall you carry me until the day grew? And they all carried him. They could not bring him down. Next time when they told him to come and arrest them. So a guy will not be arrested. Power. Somebody shout power. power. I'm not talking about physical. Oh. I'm talking about when you take a gun to look at a man. Point at the man. And the gun turn before you and face you. You say I think I'm dreaming. 
the thing torn. You will drop the man and go home. The kingdom of God is not in grammar. Please remove the word grammar. Put phone. Oh yeah. Let's read it again. One, two, go. For the kingdom of God is not in phone, but in power. Azata. Give someone a high five. Say that's the correct translation. Phone. Um, let me tell you something. Before we start today's service, <coughs> can I get water there? Before we start today's service, you, you must understand that uh, the church is going through. Can I tell you something? Somebody shout Halle, Halle. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Put it together. Hallelujah. The, the kingdom of Oh God. The kingdom is not in phone, but in what? Please put it on your Facebook. It's important. Quoted by the kingdom is not in phone, but in power. You know, Fino said, I ain't so phone. Ah, ah, ah. Not that one. I ain't so power. I am so power. We speak power. The currency of the believer.